updates since I've been out here. But we are back. Um, this is a live session. I don't know how long tonight is going to be for internet. Uh, we've had a lot of internet issues and a lot of problems. As the last uh, episode that I had did not go so well. Um, the internet went down and I couldn't get it back up for about 20 hours. So, we got it back up and running. The question is how and we're already having issues already. So, I, I really don't know. If it, if it disconnects again, I, there's not much I can do. Um, I think it might be time for a new modem. Because this modem might be a POS, as far as I know. But we're going to keep going. I'm going to image anyways. So tonight I'm going to be imaging M52 and the Bubble Nebula. And I'm going to do it in extreme exposure tonight. Uh, the one camera I'm going to do is 20 minutes. And then the other camera I'm going to do is about 18 minutes. So hopefully now I, I, this first image that I'm going to be getting and guiding is, is a dream tonight. Uh, we're running at 0 0.28, 0 0.27. And even looking at the last 400, we're at 0.45. The only reason that you see these two here and you see this is a cloud band went right through the image. Of course, there's two cloud bands on the entire freaking sky, and it had to be right where I'm imaging. Go figure. So I'm hoping that's the end of the clouds. I just walked outside to see exactly what it was. And right now, not looking so bad. We are at 59% on this one, and we're more than halfway on the other one. So we're almost there for these images. We'll see how these turn out. Again, I'm going to be shooting Hydrogen Alpha with the QHY, and I'm shooting just regular, no filter, no nothing with the Orion G3. The clouds have moved away, so this first image is probably going to be spotty because there was a lot of clouds that went through. It was just two bands and it messed up guiding so I'm sure it's gonna mess up the image but we'll see what it looks like I checked the focus I checked everything should be in good shape tonight I was not distracted this time as that was the problem last time as I was so distracted I actually aligned on the wrong star raise your hand if you've ever done that before I, I, the first time I've ever done that where I was in a rush, was distracted, didn't know what star it was, and thought it was a, the star, and clicked yes, and then the set of the alignment was successful, and when I went on the actual star and went into an object, I'm like, there's no way that that's that object. So, fixed it. I'm not distracted. <laughs> We're in good shape now, so everything should be in great shape for tonight. Hopefully there's no more clouds that get in the way, because I want to try to get at least five or six of each and I've never shot the bubble at this far of an exposure uh, last year I did the bubble and I only did it I think it was like 300 seconds and 600 I've never gotten anything more than ten, more than 10 minutes on this object so I'm really hoping that this object is gonna turn out really well there's no obstructions now cross your fingers and just hope so this one's at 70%, so we'll pull this one up, and then we'll pull that one up here too. And that one's got about, just about three minutes to go. I see more clouds again. Son of a... Come on! Naturally. You know, because that's just how things go. It was going so well... We're going to keep going forward. We're going to keep trying, I guess, because there's not much more we can do. And it's that high haze, too. It's the high clouds that's coming through here. Why can't we just get a pristine night where there's no high-level clouds? Can't I just ask for that? You know, that would be really nice. Where I can just take a 20 minute image and it would just be phenomenal. But it's going to be interesting. I mean, guiding is phenomenal. Even through with these clouds, it's still running at 0.3 to 0.4. And it's still running really, really well. So we'll see. I can't make any guarantees of what it's going to be like. Not bad. Definitely nailed it. 
where it's supposed to be in, in, in the sky. Definitely got it. That's it right there. So even with the haze and with the clouds, we still absolutely nailed this image. That is a really cool image. That's really good. I actually got this exactly the way I want it. Bring that out just a little bit. There we go. And then this one's at 96%, so this one will be done very shortly too. So I'm going to move this out here. And then move this over. This over here. And this one should be done. So that's an 18 minute image on the left, which turned out really good. I mean, you can actually see the bubble closed. You can actually see it. Some of the images what people take of this is that you only get that bright spot right there off the star. And you don't actually get it to actually be closed. And you don't get most of this. So it actually turned out pretty good. And this one that's coming up here on the right, which should be done in a second, this is the hydrogen alpha at 20 minutes. So we'll see how this one turns out. Let me image process color, fit to window. This sucker's going to be blown out, so we're going to bring that one out to the right. Because this is going to be bright. Alright, now we'll bring it back down. Make it bigger. And we will zoom in. There's actually nebulosity up somewhere up at the top, too. I don't know what that is. I'll have to figure that out. And the stars look pretty good. I really can't complain, and this would be the bubble right here. So, let me go to 0.75. I'd like to know what that is up there. So this is M52 right here, and this is the bubble right here. Now, you're not getting much detail, only because i got to extract the red channel, and then you'll start to get some of the actual detail of the, of the actual nebula in a little bit. Maybe I can figure that out, what's up there. Let me look it up. Let me see. Let's check uh, Starry Night and see maybe Starry Night will have... There's still clouds coming through. Come on. Come on, weather. Come on. Stop screwing with me. So that's M52 there. Let me type in bubble. I don't know if it's going to show up if I type in bubble. Probably not. Oh, there it is. Yeah, bubble. All right, so there's the bubble there. It looks like it's this one here, NGC 7538. Let me check that. That might be it. NGC... 7538. Yep, that's definitely it. Okay. Oh, that's definitely it. All right. NGC 7538. Go. Yeah, that's definitely it. Will Wikipedia have a picture of it? No, well, um, <laughs> definitely not that good of a picture. Let's just go to images. Let's look at that one. And then we can just look at our image and, and can compare to it. So we'll hit this one to the right, this one to the left. We'll scroll all the way to the right. And that's it right there. So we got one, two, three, and then you got one, two, three right here. So that's definitely it right here. It's going to be small. This is going to be extremely small. But that's this right here. So that's pretty cool. It's going to be. Um, pretty 
bad for guiding. The clouds moved away yet? Yes. Okay. And where are we for for five sixty eight? Okay. I'll move this one over here. And what are we for this one? Thirty nine percent. Okay. So that's really cool because that's the bubble and that's M fifty two. So my field of view is pretty much like this. That's my field of view. Not bad. Not a bad night. Airplane. No. There we go. So we'll keep this up for a little bit. We still got about phew, eight minutes to go before these images are going to be done again. That's the downside of taking 18 and 20 minute exposures is you're going to have the long, long wait between images. And hope to God that there's no airplane, no clouds, no satellites, asteroids, anything you could possibly think of that would ruin the image because you're taking such a long exposure. But that's just part of astrophotography. You just roll with the punches. you got to have a lot of patience. And sometimes I don't have that, as you can tell. So I'm just going to relax just for a little bit here. And we're going to see how this goes, see how this is when, when it's done. Now the reason why the left image and the right image are flipped is because when I was trying to shoot one of the objects on the last image session I wanted to get both objects in the actual field of view so I rotated the camera 90 degrees and I never I never rotated the camera back to match to orient with the other camera not a huge deal as I'll take care of that and switch it back but again it's not a big deal as you can see the you got one, two, and that's these two right here, and then you got the big one there. And yeah, so we'll, we'll leave it as is, but not too horrible. And you could tell that this camera is so sensitive. It's just absolutely incredible how sensitive this camera is. If I were to make a suggestion to anybody that's just starting out to astrophotography, that's the camera to get. I, hands down. I mean, it picks up so much hydrogen alpha. There's no filter on this camera. There's no filter for anything, and it's picking up hydrogen alpha at an alarming rate. And for the price of this camera, getting it used, it's so worth it. So if anybody's looking to get us jumping into CCD photography and they have a DSLR, definitely look into the Orion camera. It is the, To me, it's the camera that has nine lives. This camera has died on me three or four separate times and, I, and it always seems to come back to life and it hasn't disappointed me maybe it's just bad luck on my part I don't know but it's it is an amazing camera considering the price and the only downside is the program that it uses which is Orion Camera Studio is not the greatest program in the world um, APT is another program that I was using before. It's an okay program. It's not the greatest, uh, especially for CCD photography. Not the greatest uh, for using. I mean, I, I still got to get used to it. And it's also a four-color sensor. And it's a uh, CMYG, a cyan, magenta, yellow, and green, instead of having the regular camera of red, green, and blue. So it is a little bit tougher to stack and get the right color. So that's the other problem. 30 seconds. Got darker. It's also a lot better too. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Which means that one's gonna be pretty good too. 
This one's at 92%, so we should be able to see how this one turns out. Getting looking like 0.34. I mean, the way guiding is going, I could probably do a 40 minute exposure at this point. And that's incredible. Still really good. Not a cloud in sight now. Now we're doing really well. Oh, well, that's beautiful. That is phenomenal. It, it got darker. Let me make this one bigger so then this way I can actually see it and actually bring out yeah you can definitely see the nebulosity now yeah, that actually turned out really well so again this is M52 that's right here this is the bubble nebula which is going to be right here and I'm shooting this in hydrogen alpha, which is a red filter, which is why you're seeing red throughout all out here. And then if I were to take this image and actually minimize all of this, yeah, I know I need to organize this. This is crazy. And go to the latest bubble image, which is right here. It's this one. So this is the latest one that I just took. Okay, it's in black and white. Okay. And then if I were to take the image and use just extracting the red, it's going to bring out detail on the actual bubble, which is what I want. Whoa. And you're going to start seeing detail right there. You can start to see some of the detail throughout the bubble all through here. And that's what you want. Which is actually going to turn out really well. And the stars are still looking pretty good. And again, this is a 20 minute exposure. And the stars look, I mean, they're bloated because I expanded the histogram so much. I mean, that's what it should be. But when you stack the images, it's going to look really well. So those stars look really good. For it being a 20-minute exposure, that's not bad. 20 minutes, that's 1,200 seconds if you're scoring at home. So that is not bad at all. I, the way guiding is going tonight, as I said, I could probably do a 40-minute exposure, and I would still get pinpoint stars in the middle. So guiding is doing really good. We've gotten two images. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to end the broadcast. And with no moon not, not coming out for at least another I'd say half an hour, 45 minutes, we should be able to get two or three of these without a problem. And as I said, if anybody's watching live or watching on delay, comment. Let me know how you, how you feel. Let me know what's going on. Oh yeah, this was uh, the veil. I think, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, this was the veil from the last session, and which didn't turn out so well. And you just barely see it along here. And this is 52 Cygni. This is borderline from being a naked eye star. And then there's a nebula that sits right behind the star and goes right through it. And it's called the Witch's Broom. It's part of the Veil Complex. And I tried to get this, but it just didn't work. It was a bad, 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 very bad night. This one I would love to stack. This is the North American Nebula I did two weeks ago. 
that I'd love to get a ch get a chance to do. And you can just see the nebulosity all throughout here. And that is just absolutely incredible. And then the pelican is right here. This is the like the beak of the pelican and this is the head right here. And then this is like the space between the pelican and the North American Nebula. And the reason why they call it the North American Nebula is because this would be the Great Lakes region right here. And then this would come up and this would be Maine. And then you'd have Massachusetts down here going all the way down to the Atlantic. So this is what it would be here. And then you would just have this long line going across. So this was very, very rich in nebula. So if I were to stack five or six of these, this would just jump out at you. And it would be absolutely amazing. I just haven't got a chance to do it. This is a 30-minute explorer. This is 1,800 seconds. So that, that one turned out really really well so this was the same image North American nebula image but this time I took the red channel out so that means you're actually gonna see more nebulosity and it's gonna be more vivid and you can definitely see that it's it's more noticeable here and it's more noticeable down here it, it turned out really really well I mean I was very very impressed and for this being a 30 minute exposure and looking at the stars in the middle, there was a slight, and I mean oh so slight, drift on the stars. It wasn't horrible, but it turned out really well. The stars look really, really good. I really can't complain. For that being a 30-minute exposure, I was very, very impressed. And I should be able to just pop this detail out. Same thing down at the bottom right here. It should turn out really, really well. Yep. That's perfect. Stars just did not move. I mean, they are not moving at all. So, I think it's just off by a little bit on focus because the stars do look egg-shaped here. They do look a little egg-shaped there. I'm not going to touch the focus. Not a huge deal. But... I, I'm really impressed then of how much detail you're getting on the actual on bubble on actually just one shot. I mean that's that's the thing. People are going to look at that and say, "Well, that's not a good image," you know. But it's only one. It's only one, and I and we're on number four. So eighteen minutes times three. I mean, you're going on fifty minutes, and that's we're going to be approaching an hour very shortly. And that's that's pretty good. And I'm hoping to get more out of this one. But we will see. So we're going to wait for this one to be done, and then I'm going to end the broadcast. So it's only going to be a short, very short image. You know, it's a very short image session. We're looking at, right now we're about 46 minutes, and that's usually what I like to do is between 45 to 60. Keep it as short as possible. And then when edited... It'll be about 25, 20. So, not terrible. Um, if anybody wants to comment, if anybody wants to stay on, message me. Let me know. And then I can show people as we go along. But other than that, we are about a minute and a half to two minutes away from this one being done. So, wait till this is done, and then we will call it a night. Ninety-five percent. We're almost there. Almost there. All right, and here we go. Down to the last thirty seconds. Beautiful. All right. I think we're good. I think we are set. So. I want to thank everybody for watching for tonight, and please make sure to always visit my YouTube channel and hit like and subscribe. The last three videos that I've been doing on Facebook Live, 
will be up on YouTube in the next couple of days. I just haven't had a chance to get them converted. I did. Now it's just a matter of editing those three videos. So they will be up on YouTube. They will be up on my website. It's just a matter of time. I just got to get to it. So again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful night. Bye.